You might not realize it, but your car borrows a ton of technology from the world of motorsports. Everything from your brakes, transmission, suspension, and especially your engine were all tested and proven on the racetrack. There are too many to list in one video, but here are a few ways your car can trace its lineage to the winner's circle. Going fast is great, but eventually, you need to slow down. There isn't a much safer way of doing that than a set of disc brakes. The first successful use of disc brakes on the track was in 1953, when Jaguar put some rotors on their C-Type race cars for the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Early drum brake systems couldn't provide the performance or reliability that disc brakes could offer. The improved cooling meant that disc brakes would be more effective for longer than other competitors. Jaguar ended up winning that year, and the rest is history. Anti-lock brakes were also proven at the racetrack. The Ferguson P99 was a Formula One car piloted by the legendary Sterling Moss in 1961. It featured a fully mechanical ABS system, as well as four-wheel drive. The P99 remains the only four-wheel drive F1 car to ever win a race. The man behind the prancing horse, Enzo Ferrari, once said that aerodynamics are for people who can't build engines. Well, he was wrong. Aerodynamics is one of the most important aspects of race car design, but it is also central to building an efficient daily driver. Early land speed racers figured out that a sleeker car didn't have to work as hard to cut through the air, letting them go faster. While most road cars aren't designed with top speed in mind, every car benefits from being more aerodynamic. Less air resistance means better fuel economy. The suspension in a race car is much different from that in your daily driver. Your car is most likely set up to deal with the challenges of everyday driving, like uneven road surfaces and potholes. Race cars, on the other hand, mostly drive on buttery smooth tracks. While road cars are focused on passenger comfort, race cars are focused on speed alone. Comfort be damned. It seems like there isn't anything you can buy these days that isn't made with carbon fiber. Headphones, skateboards, fidget spinners, luxury yachts, all utilizing this mysterious material with seemingly endless uses. But it wasn't always like this. McLaren unveiled their MP41 Formula One car in 1981. What made it special was the monocoque chassis made with carbon fiber. Earlier Grand Prix cars were constructed from aluminum and steel. And while these materials did the job, they could not compare to the rigidity and strength of carbon fiber. Since then, carbon fiber has become ubiquitous in Formula One and other racing series, and has made its way to the consumer. Mainstream cars like the BMW 7 Series and even their i3 utilize carbon fiber, and the material is finding its way into more affordable cars every year. Your engine might be the biggest recipient of technology developed in racing. Back in 1954, Mercedes-Benz outfitted their W196 Formula One car with a fuel injection system similar to that used in World War II aircraft engines. However, this technology was too advanced and unreliable for the consumer market of the time, so fuel injection didn't become a mainstream technology until the early 80s. Another advancement perfected by racing is forced induction systems like turbochargers and superchargers. Both of these devices push more air into the engine, creating more power, which is awesome. The race teams of Formula One's first turbo era in the 1980s were able to get up to 1,500 horsepower from turbocharged 1.5 liter engines. Turbochargers were eventually outlawed, but have since returned to the sport in 2014. Teams now use turbocharged V6s, and nearly every car brand today offers a turbocharged model in their lineup. While your car may never see a racetrack, innovations that were made there live on wherever you drive.